Hey guys, name's Finn, playing some Thief 2 fan missions again. Can you guess what I'm playing? Of course you can, it's in the title. Playing some Larsen. <laughs> Whatever. It's the, uh, it's, it's a series that's pretty good, so the story is quite simple. Garrett got tired of the city life, I guess, and moved to a charming little town where he could rob in peace. But alas, when staying at an inn, he himself was robbed. Or burgled, as they say. So, with that enragement of Garrett out of the way, let's begin the story. A master thief could get rich in this town, steal a 3,000 gold. You've been humiliated enough. Recover your goods. The villain, Larsen, has hidden his treasures somewhere. Find them. Larsen should rot in jail for the way he's treated you. Okay, so let's put him in jail. Keep him alive and avoid any slaughter. All right, then. Here we are in the hotel room. No map, but we have a note. Hmm. My dear Garrett, don't think I have anything against you. It's just the harsh law of our profession. I must confess that it was a real stroke of luck. I came in the room for a little routine theft, and who did I see sleeping like a baby? The famous Garrett himself. I've heard of you many times, and yet you disappoint me. You should have made a better effort to hide your loot. It was child's play for me to find it. What about the lock? Goodness me, an old rusty nail would have been enough to pick it. Obviously, your reputation overestimates your skills. I advise you to leave this town, my friend. Its resources are not plentiful enough for two professionals of our caliber. Yours faithfully, Larsen. Ash, you are a bastard. Well, his name's not Ash, but like, you know, Larsen, Lashsen, close enough. <laughs> I guess he marked his mark there, or maybe that's me marking my mark there so I don't forget where I put my loot. Oh, better be everything as it was, though. Oh, 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 oh. So, here's the window. I guess I could jump right out the window in enragement, but I won't, because... Seriously, I like this color scheme here. It's real orange and, and stuff. Uh, I don't know. Oranges are pretty good, right? You could drink orange juice and it's healthy for you, apparently. I, I don't really know. It's just what I heard, and God knows you got to believe what you hear about health because it changes every five minutes in order to sell supermarket tabloid mags. So, so yeah. This hotel is a pretty crummy hotel. Look at these rooms. I mean, seriously. Like, that bed doesn't even have a pillow. Also, the room is terrible and, and crummy looking. Crummy seems to be my new favorite word. That... That one's different. It's the luxury room. You can tell because the bed's oriented east to west so that you can't get pregnant when you try to conceive in it. And another! Two luxury suites right next to each other? This place is heaven on earth! Clearly. And uh, since I'm supposed to be here, nobody cares. But looks like those two guys are both hitting on the uh, barmaid, or given that they have swords, maybe just hitting the barmaid and killing her. That's not really a joke, but yeah. Anyway... <laughs> Goldilocks house. Goldilocks and her bear cubs are happy to welcome you for a month, a day, or a night. Sweet dreams. Oh, how cute. Too bad this town is not as cute as it seems. Public notice. A reward of 5,000 gold pieces is offered for any information about La Seine, public enemy number one of our charming little town. Contact the police or the watch guards with any information or questions. Well, okay. Seems like this place could be a bit dangerous. I've got my picks, I've got my compass, sword, blackjack, broadheads, waters, ropes. Fairly good starting equipment. Now this mission is, I think, 2003. Meaning it's before the era of uh, the snobbish missions. Come away! <laughs> Which are all like, oh, I'm all fanciful and, and, uh, oh, oh. Graphics that are made from updated packs and stuff. Yeah, well, those are awesome. But anyways, what I'm saying is that this is like one of those things that Like it's got a whole lot of substance and, and like architecture and stuff and it's all stock textures I think but what I'm saying is it looks really good uh, And uh, it plays really good too as, as I recall and this is an entire series of like I don't know four Missions I think it's not really a campaign because they're separate, but it I guess it kind of is in in spirit and heart public notice be vigilant the police are looking for a man named Garrett speak to the nearest sentry guard if you have any information or queries and then there's a reward for well 
Yeah, because it's just, it's a city mission. You all know, I've said it several times before, that those are like one of my favorite kinds of missions. So, obviously, this would be one of my favorites. I don't know why I never played this before. <laughs> oh, Garrett. Oh, is the clackman. Yeah, I don't know why I never played this before. There's no reason for me not to have played it before, because it's a freaking sweet little series of missions. But, nevertheless, always gotta make up for things, by which I mean better late than never. But, I, I guess I just started trying to talk and say something, so... Yeah, I'm not allowed in the streets, presumably, because I'm wanted, and so I'm going to hide away and just pick a standard door. Narrating my actions as if it's so cool. Are you ready, thieves? Let's get ready to look so tough. Well, oh yes, there we are. Ladder up here. There should be a ladder up here because the town's got to be symmetrical. Like, because otherwise it would give OCD people like me a fit of OCD. And that would be bad because then you'd get sued. Because you can get sued for wearing the wrong kind of hat. Geraldine's Diary. Nobody's so busy these days that I'm bored. Time passes more quickly with G with Georges at my side. He's such a wonderful lover. I must be careful that they never learn of each other. I hid Norbert's daily letters as I don't want Georges to see them. If he ever did, he would demand an explanation from him at once. To tell the truth, Norbert is a far richer match. Poor Georges, who thinks he can make his fortune with his little exotic seasoning business. What a dreamer. Still, I feel sorry for him sometimes. Again, Le Puyou has come and sung his dirge beneath my window. He has come here for a week every night. I'm getting worried. I don't know how far this half-wit will go. Who knows what unhealthy thoughts are bred in the minds of idiots. In the beginning, I found him touching. I remember him curled up in a corner of the marketplace. He was plucking his harp and playing discordant sounds. We used to see him there as he gently stroked people's hands or kissed the guards, and they always kicked his rear to thank him. <laughs> but he had never caused any harm. He's just a bit thick, due to an intermarriage, probably. Even the bone setter couldn't help him. His big empty eyes and his vacuous look arouse pity, but now he's almost scaring me. He spends entire hours beneath my window, and he drives me crazy with his out-of-tune instrument. I shouldn't have opened my door to him when I felt a bit down. I just wanted to talk. I had to speak to somebody, even a simple Simon. Norbert went off on a business trip for some days, and I felt so lonely. That will teach me to welcome the unlucky underprivileged and to offer them a hot meal. <laughs> they always imagine I'll do something special for them, little pitiful things. I just don't want to hear about charity anymore. Raymond says he's not really surprised that I attract men as well as problems. He says that if I want to avoid them, I should reject the first ones, then hide my cleavage a little better, and for the second ones I should count to three before talking. Norbert is a very jealous man. Despite his great reputation, he's no longer in his first flush of youth. The necklace Norbert gave to me is gone! Oh dear, what can I do? I've looked everywhere. If Norbert hears I've lost his gift, he'll be furious. God knows that my Norbert is not very bright when he is upset. Yesterday, when I came back home, I found muddy tracks on the floor. Someone came here and took my necklace. I know it was that bloody half-wit Priu. I can feel it. My womanly instinct never fails me. Old Mrs. Fouque told me where he lives. He finds refuge in the old tower near the security office in the industrial district. But I won't set foot in his den. How horrible. And I don't know how to get there. That Puyu bastard has learned to hide himself. I have an idea. I'll send my brother. I'll let him in on the secret. He can go right ahead and beat that innate moron up. If Norbert Bert knew about it. Wow. <laughs> Pretty harsh, but uh, as harsh as it is. Also, yes, I forgot to mention, this is made by uh, by uh, uh, Gaetan, who made The Black Frog. Uh, campaign, which I did not appreciate enough while I was playing it for some reason. Well, at least I don't remember doing so, and I feel terrible about that. But yeah, anyways, and so this whole thing is kind of with the French names and stuff, so it's going to be fun trying to pronounce things, as it already has been. Right, well... Let's just continue walking around, I suppose. Man, I really like the lighting here. It's odd and sort of warm and, and reminds me of one of Sly Fox's missions. It's not really relevant, but it just kind of does. This looks like a nice little garden to have a picnic in because I always have a picnic when I'm playing games. What have we here? 
Hammers building doors into the ground near those heretical plants? Pish and posh, good sir, that could never happen. I don't know if there's anything up here. Probably not, but they're gonna let me have a look, so yeah. Hope! Got to outwit a guard. Oh, I see. I seem to have just made the loop, I think, because this is probably just the end. Yeah, so I've made a little loop de loop on the ground, and now I suppose. I want my map, damn it. This one, unlike Thief Deadly Shadows, does not just hand you maps on a platter for no reason when you haven't even earned them. Nope. Uh, so, yes, what I'm saying is. Oh, that guy? Oh, what? How did I get past that guy the first time? He must turn around or something. But why would he realistically do that? I don't know. Oh, well. Yes, okay. Going left, this is the correct way to go. I mean, I this actually it may seem like, oh, hey, it's just a city where you walk around. It may seem a little slow at first. But you mark my words, it does pick up after a short time. Otherwise, I wouldn't be all like, hey, man, this place is pretty good. But yes, already I'm in an abandoned building with a glowing coal thing that doesn't animate. And, uh, oh, 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 old games sure do suck. Oh, I found La Saint Pal. Who the hell is it? I found La Saint Pal. Now I know where he's hiding. The miscreant stole a hundred crowns from me, the results of two months' hard work. I'm not in the habit of doing things for peanuts, so I moved heaven and earth to find him, and at last, D-Day has come. <laughs> Want to join us? Hey, pal, tis a long time since we had some fun, and I cross my heart and hope to die that it'll be worth the trip. I was told he is on to something very big, something never done before. I don't know much more, but I can make any man talk, even La Seine. The bloke sees no difference between honest citizens and his thief brothers. He steals from whoever he meets. He never learns. If we get our hands on him, he'll never make it to a ripe old age. He's hiding in the east side of the old town in an inn at Serge's, near the abandoned districts. Bring along your friends. They're not very bright anyway. The more the merrier, and I'm already splitting my sides laughing. Ah, la sane boy will get a sound thrashing from us. La souris, which means the mouse, I believe. <laughs> and, uh... Yes. Also, he, he he talks like Detective Gumshoe. So, so there's that. I guess this is the hole that you can peek out and see if anybody's walking. Who's going to see you? Oh, what? All right. Who touched my gun? No, just... I wonder what all that right. noise was. What? Oh. <laughs> Come on. Crouching is a thing you can do in this engine, so do it! For some reason, I'm ghosting. You just know I'm going to give up ghosting later, as I literally always do. But for now, I'm being the sneak, because I bees the monster killer. So, over here now, and there seems to be a big old building with some woman up top, possibly or possibly not, exposing her breast like a... Yeah. Young Girls Private School, St. Margaret Convent. I guess it's the school to teach people how to be... Yeah, never mind. I, I don't know why that would be there. Maybe, it, yeah, hey. Guess it was nothing. These guys are supposed to be having a conversation. I don't think there are any conversations in this game. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, there's that poor... Hey, where'd you come from? ...guy. I guess that one place wasn't so safe after all. Well, I don't know. That school looks like it might have something inside of it in map. Spoiler, it does, but that'll come later, because it's been quite a while since I played this, and I have played it several times, but, uh, yeah, well, I don't remember everything, do I? I mean, come on now. Oh. <laughs> Weekly report. Monday. Very quiet. The lads didn't notice anything strange. Tuesday. Robert drives me crazy. I wonder whether I should fire this slacker. He was dead drunk again when he came on watch duty. And he dares say that rum sharpens his senses. <laughs> well, I'm going to sharpen his rear with my sword and he won't come back here. It was his fault that Larsen slipped away again in the one-eyed man case. He was blind drunk and he rushed up to one of the guards. He thought he was the culprit. What a moron. Wednesday. Gerard isn't here because he's suffering from a hangover. That Robert. Isn't it enough that he's always drunk? He has to take Gerard with him. Thursday. I smoked the Havana cigar so kindly given to me by Sir Delore. It was so good. Sir Delore is a fair man who knows how to deal with a city. 
What a great presence. Such a peaceful influence. Friday. The security office received an anonymous letter. Another villain has come to town lately, as if Lars Sane wasn't enough trouble. We don't know yet where he's hiding, but we'll soon find him. That taffer boy is not familiar with this place and we'll show him what we're made of. I'll be damned. On my word, as guard chief graduated tenth from the academy. My men are leading the inquiries. They're searching inns, taverns, everywhere. But it's very hard because we don't know what the churl looks like. Old Miss Fouque, the butcher's lady on the marketplace, told me she saw a weird guy who wanted a quarter of Berwick the other day. One might say, what's wrong with that? But the man moved clumsily. He had shifty eyes. No one should trust shifty eyes. My boys have his description now, but I think that what old Miss Fouque told us was a load of crap. So what we've got now is a man with a limp and perfidious eyes. Well, it's some kind of a lead anyway. Last minute information. Four Eyes said he found out the hiding place of the Larsane gang. It's near the big marketplace gate behind some sort of secret entrance. I'm going to police headquarters to find out some more about it. If you want to see me, go there. The guard chief. Well, well, well. Looks like there's a bunch of other villains around in this town, or maybe it's, they're all just part of La Seine's gang. That could be a thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, that's right, I stole your arrow. Now you can no longer point at the trash and stick people's mouths into it. Oh, 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 I think I actually might be getting into a place that I said I might be getting into later right now. And yeah, I guess there's maybe... Like, are there different ladder lengths in the stock resources, or is it just one length of ladder and you have to stick them together? What if you wanted a short ladder? You'd have to make it yourself, and that would be horrible. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 I'm in an electric room, and I, I, like, I don't know, I might be in a building what leads to a school, and it just leads to a guard station. No, I might just be in a guard station. Do I go up the stairs, or do I go not up the stairs? I don't know, but it feels kind of strange and cool to be playing a real classic style thief mission after playing a bunch of fancy stuff all the time. Well, oh yes, I, I remember this, although I don't recall why. It's not amnesia, it's why amnesia. Also, those guys might not be able to get me for some reason. Yeah, now I'm in the sewer. I, I don't have a map and I feel sort of, I feel naked without a map. I feel like I'm running around in the sewers naked. Is this what you want, man? Odd sort of water edges. Oh, I don't know. These water brushes seem to be oddly placed or something. <laughs> Maybe it's new dark, probably not. I don't have any texture or object enhancements on here because I don't want to do that, man. Unless I'm told to, oh shit. <laughs> Five? I ain't gonna waste any here. Come on now. Yeah, so maybe this is a hideout of some gang uh, of thieves. Because, after all, they do rather look like thieves. Man, I thought I remembered this part from another mission. Uh, vis-a-vis -vis Benny's dead. But, no. <laughs> it's just this one. Sometimes I remember things like that and... It's a bit funny. Well... Hmm... <laughs> Guess I've just made things trivial. It's pretty cool, I guess. I don't know who she is supposed to be, the leader or just a thief. But now I'm not even remembering what's even supposed to be here. A sewers key, eh? Jesus, what? <laughs> this is the episode where we read a book. A bunch of times. Lonely Thief's Diary. I'm so good at this that I amaze myself sometimes. I sneaked into the Gendruel's house, the people who run the greengrocer shop. I smoothly entered the kitchen like Quicksilver. I'm not afraid to take a chance and play Father Christmas. What a slide down the chimney. As for my gifts, I took their nest egg, and it was a big nest egg. It was a bit difficult to find it. The lovebirds hid it under the mattress. <laughs> Actually, I wished to make it quick and smooth, but the old woman opened one eye. To tell the truth, she barely opened the second, but now won't open either ever again. <laughs> How could I know the bed would creak as soon as I put my hands on it? I didn't take any risks with the old man. He followed his beloved into the next world. Anyway, it was worth doing. As my old mother used to say, nothing ventured, nothing gained. And she was bloody right. Then after this dangerous experience, which I must admit I carried out with great talent... All right, there was just a little glitch. I thought I needed to do something more challenging. Using a word like glitch. <laughs> Therefore, I aimed higher, better, stronger. I decided to break into the butchers. 
Wow, I will scour the entire marketplace. I'll be known as the terror of the merchants. And even the dead barracks from the Fuquay's butcher shop will run away when they see me going. This time, I didn't come down through the chimney. It was too loud and there was no chimney either, so no problem. Like a cat, I slipped into the cellar through the basement window and I carefully looked around me. One difficulty, the staircase. Those old rickety steps would have the whole neighborhood out if I didn't pay attention. But I wasn't born yesterday. I have more than one string to my bow and I have an unfailing shrewdness. So I came out and entered by the front door. <laughs> it was far easier and I didn't harm myself. The lock was tough to pick. Surely it was a steel security lock. Finally I made it. I walked stealthily in the dark room and I listened. I listened for a long time. Nothing. Not a noise. Silence was everywhere. The meat hackers were sleeping on the first floor with their money. I'm used to it. I know where that sort of thing people hide their gold pieces. I looked around for anything else worth stealing before going for the gold, but I only found some letters. Those letters must be compromising. They were written by a woman and sent to the master of the house. I kept them just in case. I could blackmail the old man if I wanted to. Ain't it a shame to be fooling around behind his wife's back at his age? What a dirty codger. I wonder what his old woman would say if she knew just what his lovely darling was using to boost his old heart. I had no problem finding the safe. It was near the bed. I didn't manage to crack it, so I just took it with me to open it in a more private place with fire arrows. <laughs> the safe was bloody heavy. I nearly dropped it dozens of times. In fact, I fell down the staircase and didn't let go. I'd rather die. <laughs> Fortunately, old people are completely deaf, so nobody woke. I didn't hang about and left quietly. Today the butchers, tomorrow police headquarters. I'm coming! I really think I'm ready for this job. I've worked on this project for three days. I've planned and calculated everything. That building hides many treasures. Everybody knows the mechanists are rich men, and I'm going to empty their purses. Entrance door? Don't think about it, tis too well guarded. No, there's another way. I winkled information out of the old Fuquay woman. She is the gossip who runs the butcher shop. She sees all and hears all. I asked her if she knew a way to enter the offices other than by the entrance door. She said her nephew had worked in the building as a secretary. Sometimes he would sneak girls in when his bosses were away, but she said she couldn't remember where the passageway was. Just my rotten luck. It took some time, but I got it out of her. Another one or two gulps of rot got in a few well-placed slaps. She told me about a morgue window that was often opened for ventilation. Ah, how clever am I. I could make a dead man talk if I wanted to. But I must be careful because there are many guards in these big red brick buildings and when they catch you, they don't spare you. I have to choose my equipment carefully. They shall see. I'll teach Larsen a lesson he won't soon forget. From now on, he'd better watch his back. La Souris is coming. La Souris is truly fierce. At the end of the day, I won't need Larsen anymore. And if he wants to play with the big boys, he'll have to ask me first. Larsen. What a chicken thief. La Souris. Wow. So that's La Souris, eh? Uh oh. But <laughs> these books sure are lengthy reads, and uh, it's gonna, just gonna be one of those missions, I guess. So I got a sewer key, and I guess that's. That's what I need or something, because there doesn't seem to be anything else really here. Did it say La Souris, though? That's a feminine calling thing. So is that guy not a guy, or is it just La Souris because mouse is a feminine word? I don't know. French is weird, man. Just saying. It's it's cool and all, but, well, I'll, most languages have masculine and feminine forms, actually, for some reason. It's a rather totally pointless and annoying thing that doesn't need to exist as as per English which doesn't even have it but yeah let's try going up the stairs oh man that was fun well I guess the sewers key might let me out this door if memory serves oh what <laughs> hey, it's a short book awesome sewerman's diary today I saw an odd thing went down for the usual maintenance checked if all pipes were unblocked removed the dead rats and so on then I saw him the lad looked awful. I don't know what he was doing in that stinking place, but it seemed that he was very pleased to be there. I found myself face to face with him in a tunnel. I could not help screaming when I saw his mug in the darkness. So I left without further ado and took my to my heels like a cowardly rabbit. Don't want to go there anymore. Who was this guy? A tramp? Now there's squatters in the sewers. That's a bit much. I'll talk about this with the hygiene and security director. They'll have to do a thorough clean-up down there.
Oh. Yes. So, I am now out of the sewers, and I guess I'll leave it there. I suppose this episode didn't have anything climactic happen in it, so, oh well. But, uh, see you guys later. Bye for now.